Whistleblowers from the FBI are now telling a U.S. senator that the FBI may have tried to impact the election by kind of uh, fluffing around certain stories, let's say, by minimizing them so that maybe they are not elevated at the forefront and the four minds of everybody throughout America. Whistleblowers, Hunter Biden and uh, FBI agents are going over to Senator Ron Johnson and they are saying the following. Here is the letter that came out. Let me pull this letter up. And I have it drafted here. Yeah, here it is. Here it is. Okay. On August 23rd, 2022, a letter came out from Senator Ron Johnson sending it over to Inspector General Horowitz. And you can see that the Inspector General has been investigating a lot of this sort of uh, these problems with the FBI for years now. And Ron Johnson says the following. He says, all right, dear Mr. Inspector, he says, whistleblowers have recently contacted my office to share serious concerns about the FBI and their handling of the Hunter Biden laptop. These new allegations provide even more evidence of FBI corruption and renew calls for you to take immediate steps to investigate the actions regarding the laptop. He writes, in October 2022, remember in the months leading up until the election, I called on the FBI to explain what actions it took after reviewing the laptop. And he actually references this letter. Ron Johnson, Chairman, Homeland Security, sent this letter October 17th, 2020. Elections coming up in November. All of this stuff is floating all over the place. We covered many of the Hunter Biden stories here. Tony Bobulinski and others. Ron Johnson says, I sent you a letter and the FBI failed to respond to my questions. And I led the call for you to examine whether the FBI took appropriate and necessary steps after receiving the laptop. Four months later, after the election in February 2021, you informed me that your office would not take any actions that would interfere with your ongoing investigation, which is the same garbage litany we've heard about for I mean, years now. So they respond back. They say, uh, uh, dear Senator, in December, Hunter Biden publicly stated that the Delaware U.S. Attorney's Office advised his counsel that they're investigating tax issues. Earlier this month, the department announced that the U.S. attorney in Delaware was one of two U.S. attorneys to remain in his role. And in light of these circumstances, we're not going to take actions that could interfere with the ongoing investigation. OK, this is coming from the OIG now. And he says, OK, since then, whistleblowers, this is Ron Johnson writing, have come to my office alleging that FBI officials intentionally undermine efforts to investigate Hunter and recently, my office heard from individuals with knowledge of the FBI's apparent corruption. After the FBI obtained the Hunter Biden laptop from a computer shop, these whistleblowers stated that local FBI leaders told employees, quote, you will not look at that Hunter Biden laptop and that the FBI is, quote, not going to change the outcome of the election again. Further, these whistleblowers allege that the FBI did not begin to examine the contents of the laptop until after the presidential election, potentially a year after the FBI obtained the laptop in December 2019. And, and that's just amazing. While I understand your hesitation to investigate a matter that may be related to an ongoing investigation, Ron Johnson says, it's clear to me, based on numerous credible whistleblower disclosures, that the FBI cannot be trusted with the handling of the Hunter Biden laptop. I hope you understand that your office stands on the sidelines and that the longer your office stands on the sidelines and delays investigating the FBI's actions, the harder it will be for you to uncover the truth and to hold individuals accountable for the wrongdoing. I call on you to immediately investigate the FBI's handling of Hunter Biden's laptop and begin by obtaining the history of the investigative actions taken by the FBI on Hunter's laptop which should be available in the FBI case management system Sentinel. Yeah, we'll see. The case file should provide valuable information about the steps that the FBI took to examine the laptop. And Ron Johnson writes, the American people deserve transparency and they expect allegations of government corruption to be fully and immediately investigated. Thank you for your attention to this matter and this very important request. There's a whole list of enclosures here. Right. You remember this letter from October 17th? This is the one that Ron Johnson was referencing. He said, uh, hey, dear Christopher Ray, know that there's a lot of issues that are pending around here. But uh, as a, the FBI director, do you possess material from Hunter's laptop? I think we read through this one maybe exactly back then in October, you know, two years ago. 
Is it accurate that the FBI officials obtained contents from the laptop? And if so, when did you first get those records? And what did you conclude in its examination of those records? And, you know, if the president's son is committing crimes, like, you know, maybe that might be something that's useful to America. You are the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Did you investigate him? Was there criminality? Are you covering it up? We need to know these things. And so this is just the first of the enclosures. There was another letter on October 21st. This one also went over to Inspector General Horowitz. He says, I asked the FBI a number of questions. Their answers are not satisfactory. Reports indicate that the FBI does possess the laptop belonging to Hunter, and the public has a right to know about this stuff. And of course, nothing happened. Back then, he was copying William Barr and Christopher Wray, but uh, not much happened there. He sent a letter on, uh, uh, this one came back from Michael Horowitz, saying, I'm writing in response. After receiving your letter, we informed you that we're not going to be discussing any of this. Why? Because it's an ongoing investigation. Right. So all of these letters went back and forth. The intelligence communities, the DOJ, everybody over there just sort of sat on it because, well, it served their political interest. It served the narrative. Joe Biden ended up winning the election. And uh, we're asking ourselves if people were putting their fingers on the scales. Right. If FBI was burying stories or not able to look at certain, you know, you can't look at this. You can't investigate this. You can't even report on this. Does that shift how people would have voted? You know, would it have changed things? Don't know. But it's it's a very interesting conversation that's being had in many places around the country, including on the Joe Rogan show. Here, Mark Zuckerberg was on. Mediaite has a synopsis of what happened here. I was going to play the clip, but it's a long clip, so I'll just read you some of the highlights. But Mediaite reports, Mark Zuckerberg is telling us that the FBI came to Facebook warning of Russia propaganda on the Hunter Biden story. He said that when he was sitting down with Joe Rogan, Rogan asked him how Facebook handles controversial news topics. And Mark Zuckerberg came out and he says, well, so we took a different path than Twitter did. Basically, the background here is uh, you know, the FBI, I think, basically came to us. Some folks on our team, and when they were like, hey, um, just so you know, like you should be on high alert. There was the... We thought that there was a lot of Russian propaganda in the 2016 election. We have it on notice that basically there's about to be some kind of a dump of, you know, something that's similar to that. So just be vigilant, says Mark Zuckerberg. So he says, our protocol on Facebook is different than Twitter's. What Twitter did is he, they said, well, you can't share this at all. And remember, we were talking about this screaming from the rooftops about the censorship taking place in the middle of an election on a national story involving a candidate's son censored in America. And that Twitter censored it outright. And Zuckerberg told Rogan, he says, um, well, we didn't do that. He says, if something's reported to us as potentially um, misinformation, important misinformation, we also use this third party fact checking program because we don't want to be deciding what's true and false, he said. He said, I think it was five or seven days when it was basically being um, determined whether it was false. He says the distribution on Facebook was decreased, but people were still allowed to share it. So you could share it. You could still consume it, he said. And Rogan pushed back. He said, well, what do you mean about decreased distribution? What does that mean? Zuckerberg explained that the story appeared lower on news feeds to what he said was a, quote, meaningful degree. And I'd encourage you to watch this. I'm going to listen to the whole thing because I want to see what he had to say. But when I watched the clip, he said meaningful. Yeah, I mean, he says, like, yeah, it was meaningful. Like, yeah, we diminished it. Like, yeah, it was pretty meaningful. Right. They buried the story. He says, we weren't sort of as black and white about it as Twitter was. We just kind of thought, hey, look, if the FBI, which, you know, I still view as a legitimate institution in this country, <laughs> says it's very it's a very professional law enforcement. He says they come to us and they tell us that we need to be on guard about something then I'm going to take that seriously, Zuckerberg said. Rogan said, well, okay, well, I mean, did they ask specifically? Did they say you need to be on guard about that story? Zuckerberg says, uh, I know, I, I don't remember if it was that specifically, but it was, it basically fit the pattern. And then Rogan flips the conversation asking about the aftermath of Hunter. He says, you know, Hunter, it turned out to be pretty factual, idiot. 
And Zuckerberg says, yeah, I mean, it sucks. I mean, yeah, it turned out after the fact. I, yeah, it sucks. I'm sure he's really remorseful. I mean, the fact checkers look into it. And no one was able to say it was false, right? So basically, I had this period where it was getting less distribution. I think it probably, it sucks, though. I think in the same way that probably having to go through like a criminal trial, but being proven innocent in the end sucks. Like, it still sucks that you had to go through a trial, but at the end, you're free. What? Oh, God, I can't wait to listen to this guy. I don't know if the answers would have been don't do anything or don't have any process. I think the process was pretty reasonable, you know. It's we still let people share it, but obviously you don't want situations like that, he concluded. Yeah, it's it's pretty reasonable if you win, right? If your team wins because you tip the scales. Oh, my gosh. Mark Zuckerberg, right? He also funded <clears throat> through the CFCL, the Chan Zuckerberg Alliance, whatever, right? All sorts of different election uh, efforts throughout this country. And we covered a lot of it. 